Hi everybody, in this section we're going to look at verifying trig identities and I'm going to try to give you some strategies for verifying these identities. Um, we're going to do several examples together. Here's our first one. Um, we're actually not verifying an identity yet, we're just practicing right now um, simplifying expressions. So this is very much like what we saw in the last uh, section where it says perform the indicated operation and simplify so that there are no quotients. So I have an addition to do here, cotangent of theta plus 1 over cotangent of theta. Now usually if you have something like this to add together you're going to need uh, to get common denominators so you'll have a way to combine them and so let's write cotangent as cosine over sine and 1 over cotangent of course is the reciprocal of cotangent so that would be sine over cosine now um, if we try to get common denominators uh, we, we could say that the common denominator would be sine times cosine and then we could say that this one needs to have a cosine and this one needs to have a sine now the denominators are the same um, so we've, we've done a least common denominator step and now uh, cosine times cosine is going to be cosine squared and sine times sine is going to be sine squared and we can put them over that one common denominator so all we've done in this step is add the fractions together and now cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 so um, we've got 1 over sine times cosine that's a Pythagorean identity that we used there in the numerator and now we can use our reciprocal identities to uh, get sine out of the denominator sine in the denominator is equal to cosecant in the top and cosine in the denominator is equal to secant in the top so we end up with cosecant times secant now let's look at number two from the end of this section secant over cosecant plus cosecant over secant um, the very first thing I would want to do if I were you is get rid of these uh, secants and cosecants. I would rather have sines and cosines because they're more familiar. So let's start by saying cosecant in the bottom is like having sine in the top. Secant in the top is like having cosine in the bottom. And for the other fraction, cosecant in the top is like having sine in the bottom and secant in the bottom is like having cosine in the top. Okay, now you can see it's very similar to the last one we did, but let's go ahead and walk through the common denominator steps again. The common denominator would be um, sine times cosine. So we'll multiply this one by sine over sine to um, give it the sine that it needs. And this one needs cosine, so we'll multiply by cosine over cosine. That will give us sine squared plus cosine squared in the top and sine times cosine in the bottom now Pythagorean identity says that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 and then reciprocal identities say that sine in the bottom is equal to cosecant in the top and cosine in the bottom is equal to secant in the top okay so we ended up in the same place with that one let's look at number seven together this says sine of alpha minus cosine of alpha all squared now you may not remember multiplying together binomials from algebra but um, I think if you think about it a minute you'll remember that it has to be done by FOIL method so uh, let's do here sine times sine which would be sine squared then outer times outer is minus sine cosine and inner times inner is also minus sine times cosine and then last times last is going to be plus cosine squared now sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 and negative sine cosine plus negative sine cosine is negative 2 sine cosine and that's really as simple I believe as we're going to be able to get this one right now
So all we did was the FOIL method and a Pythagorean identity, and we combined our like terms, and that was all that we were able to do. But that's all we were asked to do, because it said simplify so that there are no quotients, and quotients are fractions, and we certainly don't have any of that here. So we're in good shape. Now occasionally you're going to want to factor um, some expressions. So let's factor just a couple here. We have sine squared minus 1, which if you remember from algebra is a difference of squares. Um, something like x squared minus 25, you might remember how to factor that. This is a similar thing because it's square minus square. So we can factor this into two binomials. Sine squared is going to factor into sine times sine. And the minus 1 is going to give us minus 1 plus 1. Notice that if you did FOIL method on this, it would go back to sine squared minus 1 form. And so this is the correct factoring. Now number 17 is a trinomial, so three terms. And I'm sure you remember doing uh, factoring trinomials by backwards FOIL. So um, we can say that 2 sine squared x could be written as 2 sine x times sine x. See, 2 sine times sine would be 2 sine squared. Then our sines need to be the same, and this tells us they both need to be positive. And then last times last needs to be 1. Okay, now the only thing that we haven't made sure of is that our middle term is 3 sine x. If you think about the four FOIL steps, F-O-I-L, I know that the F is working and the L is working. We haven't checked yet that the O plus I step is going to give us what we need. So outer times outer would be 2 sine x. Inner times inner would be 1 sine x. 2 plus 1 is 3, so that would be 3 sine x, and that is the correct factoring here. Now, there are several things you can watch for or look for when you're trying to verify identities. Verifying an identity means to prove that the equation is true for all angles, and we do this by using algebra and substitutions with trig identities to make one side look like the other side. So, as you make changes to one side of an identity, use the other side to list the steps that you're using and the substitutions that you're making. That way, um, I can keep up with what you're doing. This is really just something to help me grade your work on the test. Um, but, in general, you know, if you were doing this for yourself, say on a calculus problem or something, you wouldn't really have to list the steps. It's just something to help me out while I'm grading. Now, procedures for verifying identities are not the same as solving equations. You cannot add the same thing to both sides, subtract the same thing from both sides. Um, you have to only work with one side at a time. Probably the most important thing I can encourage you to do is learn the fundamental identities from section 1.5. Whenever you see either side of a fundamental identity, the other side should come to mind. And you have to also keep in mind equivalent forms of the fundamental identities, such as cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. When you're trying to uh, take one side and make it look like the other side, it's easier to start with the more complicated side and go to a simpler form than it is to start with a simple form and go to a more complicated form. Um, also, it's helpful sometimes to express everything in terms of sine and cosine. We've already seen that that can be helpful when you're trying to simplify. Um, if you see factoring that can be done or multiplying that the problem says to do, you should do that. Um, if you have a sum or difference of two trig expressions, um, you can get common denominators and combine those two fractions. We've already done a little bit of that, so anytime you have two fractions you can use common denominators to add. As you select substitutions, keep in mind the other side that you're trying to change into because it represents your goal. If you're looking at a problem like tangent squared plus 1 equals 1 over cosine squared, try to think of a way you could relate tangent squared and cosine squared. And one way that I see to do that um, 
is by thinking, okay, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, and I know that if I have secant squared, I can do a reciprocal identity to get to cosine squared. So this identity would do a good job of linking uh, one side to the other. But sine x also would do a good job there. Um, tangent squared is, or tangent is sine over cosine, and if you made that substitution and got common denominators here, you could also get to the right answer. So either way, there's always more than one approach to these things. Now, if you have an expression that contains 1 plus sine x, um, then what you really are hoping for is a Pythagorean substitution, but you can't do it with just a single power. You need a squared function. So usually what works is to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate, or the same two terms with a different sign. That's what conjugate means. Doing that will give you 1 minus sine squared, which of course can be replaced with cosine squared. And any time you have a single power of a function, like 1 minus sine x, or 1 plus cosine x, or whatever, if you will multiply by the same two terms but with the opposite sign, you'll get something nice like this that you can use to substitute. Now just as a reminder, you really have to think about not trying to solve equations. You cannot be adding the same thing to both sides or multiplying the same thing by both sides. You have to um, make one side look like the other. You have to use algebra and substitutions to make one side look like the other side. So here is our first example. It is very much like the expressions that we simplified earlier, except that they are showing you what your simplified answer should look like. So in that sense, it's even a little easier because you can see the goal that you have in mind. So this one says verify that the following equation is an identity and this side is more complicated than this side. So let's start with the right side and see if we can simplify it until it looks like this. So I'll tell you the first thing that I would do is get rid of this cosecant and replace it with 1 over sine. So here you can see that I am taking the right side and I've already made one uh, trig substitution here where I've used a reciprocal identity to replace cosecant with 1 over sine. Now I will distribute that 1 over sine and that will give us cosine over sine plus sine over sine and that's just the distributive property. Now cosine over sine reduces to cotangent and sine over sine reduces to 1. Now look at that and look at what we wanted and they are the same so that means we are finished and we used a quotient identity to simplify cosine over sine to cotangent and so once you get what you're working on to look the same as the other side, you're done. Now as you can imagine, these do not make good multiple choice questions. Because what, you know, what can I use to make multiple choices out of? On these problems, the ones that say verify, I'm going to just have to see your work. And because there are so many different ways to approach each problem, um, my math lab does a horrible job of helping you with these and what I really recommend that you do is either open your textbook or open one of the Verify uh, homeworks. Like You'll be able to find homework for this in my math lab, but it will be multiple choice homework. And what I recommend that you do is just ignore the multiple choices and try to do them like this. And if you get stuck at all, uh, bring it to me and let me help you with it. Take a picture of it and email it to me if you want to. But the important thing is for you to get some feedback on your work before test day because I don't want you on test day to find out that a bunch of algebra steps you thought were okay are not really okay. So you need to um, let me look at some of your work and see if it's okay. But I'm just going to trust you to bring it to me. Um, I'm not going to ask for it. In this next example, let's verify that tangent squared x times 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to 1 over 1 minus sine squared x. Now I look at 1 minus sine squared x and I recognize right away 
that this is a rearrangement of our basic Pythagorean identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I subtract sine x from both sides, I have cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. And I know that if at any time in my simplifying I see cosine squared on the bottom, I'll be able to trade out cosine squared for 1 minus sine squared to reach this final conclusion. So now let's go back to the other side and think about um, a Pythagorean substitution we could make here. We know that 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x. So let's trade out that expression for cosecant squared x. And now, in order to get this simplified, um, I'm going to change tangent squared into sine squared over cosine squared. And cosecant squared, I'll change to 1 over sine squared. And that's a quotient identity and a, Pythag and a reciprocal identity that let us do that. We can simplify the sine squareds and that leaves us with 1 over cosine squared. Now 1 over cosine, well the cosine squared we've already talked about can be replaced with 1 minus sine squared, which is a Pythagorean identity. Oops. Okay, so now look at what we got and look at what we wanted to have and they are identical so we are finished with this one. But, you know, if you get here 1 over cosine squared. The only reason that you know to change it from cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared is by looking at the other side. That's why one of your hints, one of your strategy hints, says always keep in mind the other side because if I didn't know that this is what it's supposed to look like, I would have changed 1, mi 1 over cosine squared into secant squared because um, I would have just used a reciprocal identity. But because I know I'm trying to make this side look like that, instead I used a Pythagorean identity at the end. So always keep in mind what you're trying to achieve. Okay, here let's verify that tangent of t minus cotangent of t over sine times cosine is equal to secant squared t minus cosecant squared t. Um, now, I think this side has more to work with than the right side, so actually what I would do in this case is um, I would split this into two fractions. So, notice we have two terms in the top. We can split this into tangent t over sine cosine minus cotangent t over sine cosine. Okay. Anytime you want to split multiple terms in the top into multiple fractions, you just give each term its own copy of the denominator. Now, tangent, of course, can be written as sine over cosine, and cotangent can be written as cosine over sine. And so here you can see where I just took cotangent and made it into cosine over sine. There's no need to put sine over cosine in the top or cosine over sine in the top, um, there's already a fraction at work here. So when you change this to its fraction form, its denominator can just go in the denominator. Now, we'll be able to simplify sines and cosines, and that will leave us with 1 over cosine t, or sorry, 1 over cosine squared t minus 1 over sine squared t and the reciprocal of cosine squared is secant squared, and the reciprocal of sine squared is cosecant squared. And that leaves us exactly where we wanted to be. Now let's verify that cosine over 1 minus sine equals 1 plus sine over cosine. So this time, I don't have 1 minus sine squared here, so I can't do a direct Pythagorean substitution, but I can use a kind of a trick. And we talked about it earlier when we were looking at our strategy hints. Um, when anytime we have a single power of any function, we can multiply by the conjugate, which is the same two terms but with an opposite sign. So I have 1 minus sine x. I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus sine x, top and bottom.
Okay, now notice that um, in the bottom, if we use the FOIL method, 1 times 1 will be 1. Outer plus inner is going to add up to 0. That's what we love about conjugates. Positive sine x minus sine x will cancel out. And then last times last will give you negative sine squared x. So that was just the FOIL method. Notice that I did not multiply the tops together. You could, but um, it won't do any good here. So I just left that unmultiplied. Now, let's think about our Pythagorean identities, and we know that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. And now if you look, I've got cosine squared in the bottom and cosine in the top. This cosine is going to cancel one of these cosine powers and leave us with uh, 1 plus sine x over cosine x, which is exactly what we wanted. That's the other side of the identity. So we got there, and we proved that the left side is equal to the right side. Now, one last example that we'll do together in this section um, says secant plus tangent over secant minus tangent equals 1 plus 2 sine alpha plus sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha. Um, now here's how I would handle this one. I would change secant to 1 over cosine and tangent to sine over cosine. Then I would change secant to 1 over cosine and tangent to sine over cosine again. That's just quotient identities and reciprocal identities. Now, notice that all of these have a denominator of cosine, so I would multiply top and bottom by cosine so that it would leave me, you know, distributing cosine in the top, I get cosine over cosine, um, plus sine cosine over cosine, and then in the bottom. And you can see how these are going to reduce. Cosine over cosine reduces to 1. in every fraction, and it leaves us with 1 plus sine alpha over 1 minus sine alpha. We can get these two. Alright, so 1 plus sine alpha over 1 minus sine alpha. Now if we use that um, kind of trick that I showed you before, where we multiply um, by the conjugate, Notice that uh, 1 plus 2 sine alpha times, uh, or plus sine squared alpha, that is just um, the square of a binomial, as you'll see in just a minute. So the bottom is cosine squared. I really would like for this bottom to be cosine squared, and we can achieve that if we multiply by the conjugate here. Now, um, multiplying out the top, first times first gives us 1. Outer times outer gives us sine alpha. Inner times inner gives us sine alpha. Sine alpha plus sine alpha combines and makes 2 sine alpha. Then last times last makes sine squared. And in the bottom, uh, first times first is 1. Outer plus inner will cancel out. And last times last is sine squared. And we know that 1 minus sine squared can be replaced with cosine squared. That's a Pythagorean substitution. And so there we have how the left side is equal to the right side. Now that one's a little more complicated, um, but if you work through it a, a couple of times, I think it'll start to stick with you how we're getting you know, from each step to the next.